Today on Yester Kitchen, we are going to celebrate the very last episode of 2020 and we are going to make one spectacular cocktail for you. You're going to love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. If you're new here, welcome. It would be an honor to have you join us as we explore retro history through food. Although it won't be food today, it's going to be a drink. We are doing a cocktail because today is the very last Yester Kitchen of 2020. So for New Year's, I have given you two amazing appetizers and now I'm gonna give you a cocktail to wrap it all up. And yes, I am dressed as the New Year's Eve ball. I think I'm gonna do this at, to wrap up every year at Yester Kitchen. Now last year I did the full history of why there's a New Year's Eve ball and what the whole story is behind it. If you missed it, it's right there. So today, we are gonna make, well, hold on, I'm not gonna tell you yet because I have a special guest bartender that's gonna come in and make this for you. Completely giving it up to him. All right, special guest bartender, enter please. Hello, special Hi. guest bartender. So this is Rod, my husband, and if you've been with me for a while, you always hear me talking about hubby, and actually Rod joined me for two other episodes in the past. I'll put him right up there if you wanna see him. <laughs> it was fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fun for me. Okay, so in our house, when we entertain, I always do the cooking, duh, and Rod's always in charge of the bar. So yes, I know how to make cocktails, but he has perfected some, and we just had to share this one. So today, what are we going to make? Smoked Old Fashions. Okay, so here's a tiny apology. The Old Fashioned is totally retro and totally fits, but the smoked is a little current twist. But it makes it better. It makes it so much better. So we were out one night and we ordered one and fell in love and Rod came home and started practicing and practicing and he's really perfected this. And we are gonna smoke this old fashioned with no smoking gun, no dome. You can easily do it at home. You just have to be very, very careful because it is fire after all. So do you wanna start? How about if I tell the story first? Okay. I gotta tell the story. So where did, do you know where an old fashioned came from? You're gonna love this. Okay, <laughs> so an old fashioned actually started out as being called a whiskey cocktail. And that was in 1806, like forever ago. And people loved it. And as a matter of fact, they would drink it in the morning, often, because it was kind of like a hangover cure. I like 1806. <laughs> <laughs> so they were drinking it. It was in the bars. It was very, very popular. And around 1870-ish, bartenders started being bartenders and started playing around with the whiskey cocktail. The standard classic whiskey cocktail was whiskey or spirits, any kind, but usually whiskey. Bitter, water, bitters, sorry, water and sugar. That was the classic recipe. So when the bartenders started playing around with it, they started adding different liqueurs in place of whiskey. So when someone would go to a bar and order an old fashioned, I'm sorry, not an old fashioned, a whiskey cocktail, didn't have the name yet, they never really got the same drink twice because they just weren't sure, you know, what to get because every bartender was playing around with it. People started going to bars and ordering a whiskey cocktail the old fashioned way. God. I kid you not. <laughs> and actually, I didn't tell them the story before, so I can get the real reaction. See the surprise? It's, it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So eventually, ordering a whiskey cocktail the old-fashioned way turned into ordering an old-fashioned. And that's where we get old-fashioned from. Wow, cool. And now let's make one. All right, let's do it. Okay, so what do we need? I know we have our two glasses ready. Yep. And why don't you go over what we need first and... Well, the first thing that we do is we start smoking the old fashions. And like Jill said, we don't use a smoking gun. Um, we could, but then you don't get to play with fire, which is much more fun, so. Don't try this at home if you're a kid. Actually, if you're a kid, don't try it at home while your parents are there. You can do it when they're not there. You are not helping. Don't listen to him. So, anyways, I just grabbed a blowtorch out of the garage to do this. And Jill got me a cedar plank. And you can pick up cedar planks. You can get them online, probably. You can also get them at any home improvement store. Okay, uh, see, this is where the fun comes in. So you can reuse these, but I start 
I wouldn't do more than like two glasses at a time because uh, We're gonna it's hard to get all the smoke in them over put it over there. Okay. So you just do this till you get it going pretty good. You gotta watch your hand on the other side. And then you need an assistant that helps. And she should put it right over where it's kind of burning and smoking. So we'll do that on the count of three. One, two, three. And that way you can see well, that never how happens. they fill up with smoke. And so while those are filling up with smoke and taking on the flavor, we can start making the rest of the drink. Okay, so glasses are smoking. Now we're gonna get those out of the way so you can show everybody how to make your perfect old fashioned. All right, here we go. So, um, I personally like rye better. Some people like bourbon. Um, I think the bourbon is a little bit sweeter. I do it sometimes when we don't have it, but otherwise I prefer to use rye, but you can use either one. Um, so the first thing that I do is I put in two sugar cubes, like so, and then I take some Angostura bitters, and all I do is just kind of soak the sugar cubes. Um, so I don't know exactly, but I would say maybe 10 to 12 drops total but soak the sugar cubes. Do you know where Angostura bitters come from? The store? <laughs> he has to live with this. You only get to see me twice a week. So Angostura bitters was actually invented in 1824 as a cure by a doctor, as a cure for stomach problems. I was gonna say tummy problems, stomach problems. And then the family moved to Trinidad and started realizing this stuff might be great as cocktail additions because it's really condensed alcohol and Angostura was just born, it just took off. Okay, back to our old fashioned. So I can drink old fashions in the morning to solve a hangover and have a better stomach. 100%. Done. Okay, um, I put in about two, two and a half shots per drink. So I'm making two uh, and I do a full one and a half ounce shot. So uh, I'll start out. Your typical shot glass is one and a half ounces. And by the way, it's only 11 a.m. here. Perfect time for an old fashioned. There you go. <laughs> and since we're making two, there we go. So that's about five. I think it's time to buy more rum. I think it is. Um, and then next, what I do is I put in some cherry juice, um, and you want to use Luxardo cherries. It, yes, it does actually make a difference. I'm not a big foodie, but I can tell you that I'm not. But I can tell you that it does make a difference if you use Luxardo cherry juice versus the other type. And I just take about half of a teaspoon and put it in. And I can say that Luxardos are really nourishing the cherries in thick juice will thick syrup. And so they're not your ice cream sundae cherries, but there are many other brands that make the maraschinos in a heavy syrup that are not as expensive as Luxardo. And you can find those online or in some stores if, because these guys are about 25 bucks a bottle. I know, I, I know never that. told you that. But there's plenty of other less expensive options that are absolutely perfect. Great. Um, so now that we've done that, I basically put it in here, shake it up a little bit. And while we're doing that, Jill, if you could put the ice cubes yes. in. So the ice cube tray we like to use is these big giant ice cubes. And why is that? Um, with the big ice cubes, instead of having a bunch of crushed ones, they melt a lot slower, so it just doesn't water the drink down. Makes you it can, taste better. You can find these anywhere online, Any. Many, many, many stores. Okay, so ready to take it off? Or, yes. or do we do the orange first? Right. Orange peel. We can do this. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Let's so. Let's get this out of the way. And let's put these right in there. Is that good? That's not quite centered there. How's that? We just want everyone good. to see. Yep, yep, yep. Perfect. Okay. Put the ice cubes in. Over the top. 
Well, that's <laughs> a heavy drink for 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's a heavy drink anytime. But that's a... Maybe I put two ounces. <laughs> no, that's what I usually do. I will get the recipe perfectly straight and you'll see that in the description. <laughs> it's right. This is what we do. <laughs> then drop a $25 cherry into each one. Well, the whole jar is 25. Do the math. Um, put that in, and then, oh, you want to show how you yes. scrape off a peel? Let me, let me scooch over really quick. Okay. Okay, so for the, for the orange peel, you want to wind up with just a perfectly peeled, like very, see, very, very little pit, which is the white part, because that's just bitter. So what I do is I take my handy dandy peeler and my orange, and I just kind of yes. go back and forth. The kind of like, there, sorry, there we go, up and down, and then you just get off the peel. Okay. And at that point, I squeeze it a little bit just to get some of the oils out. Um, I squeeze it, I guess I should do it here in front of this camera. I turn it this way, just put a little bit around the rim. And you can leave it on the rim if you want it to look nicer, or I drop it in because I like the way it tastes better. Um, so do that on both of these. Orange peels have so much oil in them, and it's really like amazing flavor. That's why we use a lot of orange peels and lemon peels in a lot of the recipes we've made. There you go. And you do uh, kind of need to wait just a second or two because it's been sitting on that hot board and your drink will actually be a little bit warm until the um, ice cube cools it down. But just remember, yeah. you are playing with fire, super, super careful. We don't want anyone burning themselves on our watch. Super, super careful. Mom. Cheers. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I love you. Love you too. Oh yeah. It, actually, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. I mean, the ba it's balanced. You can barely taste the cherry, but it's in there. The orange on the side just picks it up. So baby, thank you so much for doing this for me. You bet. It's worth it. Give these a try. They're absolutely amazing. And if you don't feel like smoking them, just try an old fashioned on its own because the recipe is perfect. But I think you should smoke it because you get to play with fire and it's more fun. <laughs> you should see my life off camera. Okay. So thank you so much for the year and always being here and just being the best audience. I am very grateful. And now, thank you and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Tuesday and Friday. In the meantime, there are some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even a smoked old fashioned has a story. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, baby. Cheers.